it's hard to imagine sort of eight years ago when we were only open for an hour on a Sunday and an hour on a Wednesday it's hard to imagine that position and how far we've come we're about three miles west of Durham it's a small ex-mining village and the church is on the south side of the village so the church remains somewhat isolated and that's contributed perhaps to the falling congregation. And that's how we found ourselves when Caroline arrived here, is that the congregations were dwindling and getting older. And you could see into the future, you know, has this church got many years left in it? And it was Caroline's intervention, really coming up with the idea of a project, and we finally settled on breathing space, that that sort of re-energised the whole church. The story of St Michael and All Angels and the Breathing Space Project uh, started when I uh, took responsibility for this church and saying, how can we use this beautiful church in this beautiful space to best advantage so the church isn't just open for one hour a week on a Sunday, but is actually available to the whole community so they can all enjoy the peace and the sacred space of this ancient building. And because of where it is, it's uh, in a, this remote area, a very tranquil area. We wondered whether that was an asset that we could actually use. So it was part of the problem and we just turned it on its head to make it part of the solution. So it began with a conversation amongst church members, other churches in the area, and then we said, we've got this idea of a health and well-being project. We need to reorder the church in order to make that happen. But a really important question before we do anything is would the kind of groups that we were hoping to attract into our space be interested in using a church or would they actually find that threshold too high? So we held a partnership event where we sat down and thought about every kind of group that might be interested. And we identified 40 different groups and we sent them an invitation saying, this is our idea, this is our vision. If it were to go forward, would you support it? And it was one of the best days we had. The church was packed with people, organisations that had never been in here before. And to a person, they said, yes, we love the idea. So it was that mandate from the congregation, from our Methodist colleagues in the village, from the community centre in the village, because we wanted them to be clear that whatever we were envisaging wasn't going to take away their revenue, working with the local council as well, plus these organisations. That was what made us say, right, we're going to put in all of the effort that's needed to raise the money. Once it was clear we wanted to do this project, so what is it that we need to achieve that? If you're going to get people into church, on a regular basis, it's clearly we had to have some facilities. We had no toilet, we had no toilet for 800 years. We needed an office. If we were going to run a project, it would need a project officer. If we were going to serve food, we needed somewhere to serve food from. And the building itself was suffering from its age. It needed a new roof. And by the creation of this charity, Breathing Space, it started to open more doors, more avenues for funding. And that's really how things uh, started to move. For the congregation, when they saw the number of people that had turned up at the partnership event, they could see that actually this just wasn't a dream of a few people. It was actually something that, that had teeth. And that's where the amazing congregation that we've got here brought all of their skills together to do fundraising, to do advertising, to do publicity. We made sure that we produced a really good comprehensive fundraising leaflet. And another key bit for us was breaking the project down into four phases and saying, well, let's try and fundraise for one bit, then another bit, and hopefully we'll gain momentum which is exactly what happened. The first bit of fundraising that we did for the toilet, which meant that we redid the whole entranceway in, into the church, and we got the toilet on one side, and then we created an office space, and that was brilliant, everybody loved that, and we felt that we'd enhanced in one go people's first experience of coming into this church. One of the congregations paid for a glass door, so it makes it easier for people to come in to the space. And when you look at it from the outside, you can hardly see the join 
was the stone was sourced um, from an ice cream parlour in Leeds and it really does match and so the church looks as if it hasn't been altered in all those years. Phase two was the vestry. Like many churches, it was quite a sort of run-down little area where things happened and it was full of old filing cabinets and so on and so forth. Uh, we didn't have proper tea-making facilities and believe it or not, uh, we'd never served coffee after church just because of that basic fact. So all of that was reordered and that meant that that all looked beautiful and provided a, an excellent space and we could have meetings in there as well as serving refreshments. And then it was the big one, which was the roof. Well, we always kept the village up to speed with what was happening. There was leaflets that were handed out to the whole of the village. And one event in particular where we asked them to come along to a barbecue and signing of slates, so it was called Your Name in the Sky, where people could make a small donation and write the name of a loved one onto the slates before they got put onto the roof and that worked really well. It not only meant that they could feel part of the scheme itself, but they began to know and understand exactly what we were going to do at church. The final thing was to remove the pews from the side aisle and to create a space for people to have tea and coffee afterwards. And we continue to leave the table and chairs out and when the church is open and not manned, uh, there's a sign saying, help yourself, and we get lots of comments in the visitors' books saying, what a wonderful welcome, the hospitality was great. I think it's got a nicer feel now, particularly because we can have coffees. When I was widowed and I came to church on a Sunday morning and Sunday yawned in front of me as quite a, a lonely day, and now the coffees are there and people can stay and chat and it, it really is a very, very nice thing. Um, Breathing Space is um, a health and wellbeing charity. We, we run different kinds of activities which are kind of considered from the cradle to the grave. So we do activities for children and young people right up to the other end of the spectrum, uh, but mostly centred around mental health and emotional wellbeing. The lads come do a little bit of volunteering and help the community, give a little bit back and get a tea and a coffee as well while they're at it. It's good, I enjoy coming here, it's, uh, it's helping. I'm used to, like in, in the past, you know, not doing anything for anyone, and you know, by coming here and you know, helping other things, and you know, doing, some, doing something for someone for nothing, and not expecting anything back, as it makes you feel good about yourself. People didn't want anything to change. They wanted the church to change, but hadn't really considered changing themselves or changing the building. We had the first meetings and trying to get people to change it was actually describing the process of change from a psychological point of view and I think it helped people at the time recognize that process in themselves and help with the change but I think you know everybody will find their own method of dealing with these things but the, the important thing is that you do deal with them you don't ignore people's attitudes you can't be taking the time to go around and have one-to-one -one conversations with people. I think if people really feel that their concerns have been heard, listened to, and that they're able to understand the process in a way that you can't with just a notice after the church on a Sunday or something that's in a bit of paper. It takes courage on an individual level for people to let go of the memories that they associate with particular areas. But if they just hang on in there, they can see that they gain so much more.